We are back in the shop this week to give you an update on the kitchen that we're working on, as well as some new projects we're about to start. As you can see behind me, well, really all around me, and you will see in the shop, it is a mess in here. We are off to one heck of a week here. We've gotten a bunch of deliveries in. We've gotten appliances, some plumbing fixtures, some hardware for us right in front of us. Let's just jump into it. We've mentioned before that we like to get the appliances here in the shop so that we can fit them into the actual cabinetry to make sure that our reveals are correct, that everything fits the way it's supposed to. And you can kind of start to see why we're getting those pieces fit into place so that everything lines up correctly. We do have an end panel going on here, a flush countertop that comes out to the faces of these. So just really making sure all the pieces fit so that once we do get into the field, we're not having any trouble. And same is true for things like the dishwasher. Now, throughout this project, we have these flush edge poles and these need to be routed in here in the shop. But because the dishwasher, you know, locks closed, are we going to be able to open these consistently for years and years without any issue with the edge pole? Or do we need to switch over to an appliance pole to match some of the other appliances that are in this kitchen? So here we've mocked up a sample of each and they both work relatively well. My concern with using the edge pole is if you come in here, you can see the way that we have to lift up on this a little bit different than some of the others. We start to push, we start to pull this top open. And what that's gonna do is over the years, it's probably gonna loosen the fasteners in the back. And because we are using slab doors, they're MDF, we don't want any issues later on down the road with those fasteners coming loose and this, this handle just being really loose. So we've mocked up one of each so we can kind of get an idea of which application is better. And we're reviewing this with the architect and the homeowner just to make sure that we're all on the same page and everybody understands why we're doing what we're doing. Another reason that we're doing it here in the shop rather than in the field is this is going to be a finished panel once we are in the field. Routing these edge poles in, in the field, on a finished panel, is going to be much more difficult than doing it here in the shop where we have a little bit more forgiveness. We wouldn't be able to accurately test the edge pole in the field on a finished piece without being able to route it in. So having everything here just makes everything a lot easier and a lot more accurate. So let's continue through the shop where Ian and James have been in here just cranking away. You can see that we've gotten in a lot of our hardware, a lot of the Legra boxes that we tried out on this job. This cabinet here actually gets two drawer fronts to match the refrigerator that's next to it, the freezer drawer, and then two French door kind of pantry style cabinets also to match the French door refrigerator next to it. And then we have these two inner drawers here that will come out once these doors are actually opened. Perfect pantry storage right next to the fridge, right in between the cooktop and the oven. As you can see, we still have the majority of the kitchen laid out. We've started running some kerfs. Some of these cabinets are two drawer fronts. Some of them are one drawer. Which ones are which? We're not gonna tell. If you can't tell, why should we? And we are right in the middle of them still mounting a lot of this hardware. So there's stuff everywhere. So please bear with us here. But, but like I was saying, getting these handles all mounted here in the shop we're actually able to get an accurate measurement. We're able to make each one completely flush and it just saves a lot of headaches. To route these in, we're actually just using a simple shop made jig. So basically what we're doing here is we have our center line drawn on our jig. We line that up with the center line on our door. We're able to line this up in place, clamp it down, and that way we can route both the top and the back, making this handle completely flush on our drawer fronts. In this kitchen, each one is the same handle, so that makes it pretty easy where we only need to have one jig. We actually recently got back some of the samples we had submitted to the architect for approval, um, and these two colors are actually for the vanity. If you're following along with Nick, at NS Builders on Instagram, you would have seen he posted a rendering of this bathroom and this vanity. It looks killer. The other bathroom gets a very similar vanity and gets this really, really dark blue, grayish color is called graphite. Color, it's called graphite. So getting back to the kitchen, Mike actually walked through this on site visit yesterday. Now I know Nick usually does site visit. So why did Mike 
fill in? You gotta go check it out to find out. So anyway, Mike walked through this kitchen and kind of showed us where this is going to go along that parting wall with the actual freezer. As you can start to see, all of our handles are in. <clears throat> have <clears throat> Don't do it. And the guys have started to take apart some of the panels, take down the doors. They have already been bored and we're getting ready to start sanding. So in a few more days here, we'll get this kitchen out of the shop and into finish. So behind me, you can see that we still have this laminated area set up in the shop. Now we talked about this in a previous episode and a costly mistake. And I probably should have come here and talked to you guys first because you gave us some really good advice and we haven't tried anything yet. This has been kind of put on the back burner while we waited for additional materials and we had moved on to a few other things. We've got some time on this since it's not going to be sent over to the finisher. We can work on this while the rest of the kitchen is at the finisher. So we got a little bit of time there, but we really appreciate the amount of solutions that you guys sent our way. Some of them we tried, some of them we didn't, but thank you so much. I, I definitely should have come here first. So then let's kind of spin around and introduce a new project. So what you're looking at here, there's actually three piles of walnut veneer. This came in yesterday. I opened it up this morning and at first glance, it looks beautiful. But as I looked closer, I was really disappointed. Typically when we're doing a walnut veneer like this, I will hand stitch everything. That means we're buying raw veneers. We are cutting the flitches to size in shop, doing all that book matching and stitching ourselves. It is a very time consuming process, but it gives us the look that we're going for. The most notable one that comes to mind was our South End, I think it was one kitchen. It was white with curved cabinets and then had a ton of walnut. We hand stitched all those panels and you just really can't fake that look. It's a very time consuming process. This project was a little bit different in the sense that we weren't matching that many panels. So buying some already stitched veneers was going to be the most cost effective route to go here. These veneers still require a fair amount of work, right? We still need to trim these to size, lay them up on a substrate and all that. Why didn't we just go with a regular MDF or a regular plywood already veneered? We could have. The only trick there is going to the supplier and picking out six sequenced sheets. If you've ever gone to a supplier and tried to pick six matching sheets, it is very difficult. They often don't have the stock for that. People tend to go through the piles and pick whichever ones that they like best. So finding six in order, pretty tricky. Fortunately, this is two-sided, so we probably could have gotten away with three and three. Still would have been a little bit trickier to find. So I opted to use a company who I don't want to mention because I don't want to badmouth them. But what do I mean by sequenced? The way the veneers cut through the tree, all these pieces need to be in line so that each sheet looks exactly the same. There's going to be some slight variation, right? Because as you're cutting through the tree, it's going to vary a little bit. But that's natural and that's typical and you're going to get this gradual transition through this process. And here I needed six sequenced sheets and they kind of mixed up the order and only gave me four sheets, which is what I ordered for the backers, which because the backers aren't seen, I was able to go with the standard veneer rather than a premium veneer. And they kind of just had a little mix up there as well. Let's kind of take a look at some of the graining and what it is that I'm looking for and why I was uh, displeased with these veneers. So when we're looking at these, we want to comb through and pay attention to the flames or the cathedrals, as well as some of these swirl spots here and kind of understand what this pattern looks like. If I slide this sheet up out of the way here, if I slide this sheet all right, off to the side, you can see that these two sheets match. If we're looking down, we got the same kind of bottom cathedrals. We got the same swirl and the same pattern. Great. These two are perfect, beautiful graining, absolutely usable but I need at least three. There's only two. If I look at the second set, you can see that the graining here, we follow up these cathedrals, they're much different. We don't have this swirl mark 
the cathedrals peak in different places and they just, they don't match. There's a chance that these are cut from the same tree, just in different locations. The, you know, the color toning is very similar, so I would assume they probably are cut from the same tree. It's just a matter of graining. And this isn't important to everybody, but it is something that is extremely important to me. And a, a lot of times people are asking us, what sets us apart from somebody else? It's the things like this. Sure, both of these sheets are, are beautiful and we could lay them both up on a substrate, finish the project and walk away with a beautiful finished result. But that's just not how we do things. And it doesn't sit well with me. I'm always trying to push the boundaries of how can we make this project better? And this is one of those things. It's just, I've been doing it for years and years. I just can't accept it any other way. And I know that that sounds pretentious, but that's just how it is. So let's take a look at the other sheet that is under this one here. You can see that these two are also very similar in grain pattern, but again, they don't match. So out of the four sheets that I have, I only have two that match. We can really start to see this with paying close attention to these grain marks. And another thing too, is if we look close, we can see this kind of defect in the, in the sheet here which isn't necessarily uncommon and not necessarily a deal breaker for the project that we're working on. We are going to be able to cut around some of these things and would likely be able to remove that. But you would see that same defect start to show in various places throughout the other sheets. Keep in mind, as the tree grows, that defect is going to grow through it. We're going to cut into the start of it, through it, and through the end of it, all at different sizes, shapes, color tones, but you would see that as a gradual transition. A lot of what I just said didn't make sense, so Doug is gonna have to edit it to make sure it looks good. Now, those are my four premium sheets. There should have been six of them. So this is where one of the mix-ups happened is I got six of the standard sheets, which you can see right off the bat, they are a much different color tone. The graining is still pretty nice, but you know you can see there's a lot of small knots in them. These are obviously natural, but are a deal breaker for me if it was the face of a project that you're going to see all the time. You're never really gonna see the backside of the sheet, so this is acceptable to me. It does still need to be walnut because in some locations, there are gonna be some areas where you have slight visibility into the back, so we do want to make sure that it is still walnut. The reason that you need a sheet on the backside as well when you're veneering is that when you apply a veneer or even paint to one side of a substrate, is you're actually changing the surface tension of that board and you're gonna end up with a giant bow throughout that piece. So you need to keep that surface tension even and whatever you do to one side, you need to do to the second side. So veneer on each side. Now with these sheets being the backer that you're not really going to see, they don't necessarily need to be sequenced. However, there was quite a bit of variation within these sheets that I was led to believe were going to be sequenced. And as you can clearly see, they're not. So I reached out to this company, told them about the issues, actually spoke with the owner, and he's going to send us out some new veneers, making sure we have exactly what we need and make this right for us. So I will keep you guys updated on when the new veneer comes in and give you a little bit more info about this project. Um, it's actually this really cool kind of bubbly screen with some color plastics in the middle. You'll just have to wait and see. Hey, hey, wait, Doug, come back, come back, come back. Guys, one more thing before you go. Lately, we've been going live the Friday after these episodes are aired to answer some of the questions that you guys have submitted in the comments. We got a lot of them. Some of them are really in depth. The lives have been going great, but we've been thinking about expanding that into a little Q and A segment at the end of each episode here. If you guys are up for that or into that, send us some questions, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And then these will pull out. I hate saying that. We're actually able to get an accurate sized, an accurate sized cut. Acura, like the car. Fucking pissed off. No. I have. Kind of going down a rabbit hole. That defect is going to grow through the tree. <laughs> this is where we need the behind the scenes for you. I turned it on because I knew they were going to call me. <laughs>